Welcome, let's sew together the head and the ears. Let's go. Hey guys, it's Stephanie Grams. Welcome to MemoryBearsAndKeepsakes.com. I'm sewing the two, the left and the right side of the memory bear face together. You'll start at the point of the nose and you will sew down the front. And I'm gonna show you on this pattern piece. So you'll, you'll sew the front of that pattern straight down it's um, a quick stitch but you want to make sure to keep both pieces of the fabric aligned um, this is the head center also knows known as the nose placing um, the head side that you see that's where your eyes for the memory bear go sometimes people will place the eyes within the nose area or they will sew the eyes over the seam and I'll show you that in a later video so please be sure to like and subscribe to my channel ring the bell for notifications and here you want to do a back stitch to secure your stitching in place take it slow around the curves and make sure that you follow the pattern precisely that way the face of the bear is aligned um, I just wanted to zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing and um, this is really hard to film with one hand so um, bear with me and then back stitch the closing so the end of this now that curved piece right there that's the neck do not sew that and do not sew any other parts of this particular pattern piece um, one second and I will show you how to how to sew the center of the head in between the two sides of the head so let me adjust my sewing area i'm working in a very very cramped small studio right now as i work on getting a larger place right here is where you're going to place the nose and this is just for you to see um, i don't typically pin the nose but that's the center of the head and i keep calling it the nose because that's where the nose goes once it's completed and you'll notice that the pieces don't match perfectly and that's because the side of the head and the shape of the center of the head are not the same. And give me a second, I'll adjust the camera for you. Again, when you start the stitch, you want to secure your stitch. So do a back stitch once you start stitching. So I will stress back stitch several times because if you don't, your stitching will come out. And I'll try not to keep my hand in your way, but you want to take the angles um, slowly and I, I purposely put my camera this way so you can see how slow I'm actually going. This is real time. I did not speed up or slow down this film because I'm trying to show you that the pieces are a little particular. They're a little finicky for this to this pattern. Um, and the beginning and the end of this pattern, I'll have a still photo of what this pattern is. Um, if you have any trouble finding this pattern, let me know. Um, there should be a copy of it for sale in my Etsy shop. It will just be, uh, because this is no longer in print, you might be able to find this pattern still at your local Walmart store. Um, they had a few left at my local Walmart, but if you have trouble finding it, just visit my Etsy shop or go to my website at sopreneur.com or memorybearsandkeepsakes.com and let me know. Now we're, we're going over the curvature of the front of the nose here. Again, you want to make sure that you adjust your foot. Uh, as you go along, just take a couple stitches at a time. Don't rush this, otherwise you're going to get puckering. You're going to make mistakes, you'll miss your seam. Um, and your face will end up being a little bit lopsided or crooked. This is particularly finicky on knitted fabric and um, for this video, I am showing you on a baby, baby's receiving blanket. Um, and I did stabilize all of my fabric. So please be sure to like and subscribe, ring the bell for notification, because I'm going to do short, quick videos on this process of creating each piece of the memory bear. That way it's easier for you to follow along. Um, and then I will have a full length video with all of these parts put together. But this particular video is just for the right side, left side, and the center of the face. And now I'm going to show you 
the ears. Um, this is what the face looks like with the three parts sewn together. And now I am just stuffing the ears. And I have a totally other video for you where I'm sewing the ear parts together, but hopefully you can see by the angle of this camera how I did stuff those ears. And it does not take very much stuffing, so you don't want to overfill these ears. Now when you're placing your ears, I know a lot of my students had some issues with this. So when you're placing your ears, you're going to use the right and left seam as your guidance. So the middle of the ear can technically align with those seams and um, keep watching and I'll show you here in just a second. If you look at the ear I have pinned on to the face right now, that should show you the placement of your ear. Again, it's a personal preference, but if you want your bear to look like an original, typical memory bear, then this would be the placement for that. Um, and then if you move the ears around, you actually get a bear that looks like a mouse. And you'll notice that a lot where there's memory bears for sale, but they kind of look like they have a mouse head. And that's because of the way they've placed the ears on the bear's face. Now, if you want to make a mouse, then definitely do what you want with the placement of the ears. But now this is what I do. I do a short tack and I don't always backstitch on this particular part because you'll see in the later videos that I actually sew over this one last time. This is just to get the ears placed um, where I want them on the head so they don't slide off when I'm adjusting the rest of the body. But for right now, I'm just going to show you how the, I have the ears lined up. I did use a little bit of cuddle to match this memory bear the, because it's a baby's receiving blanket. It did not have enough fabric for the entire bear to be made out of just a blanket. So I went ahead and used some of my cuddle that I had um, because this is for a newborn baby girl. And it's her receiving blanket that she brought home with her from the hospital. Um, but anyway, so uh, definitely follow along and you will see how I adjust these ears. I went ahead and took the pin off of this one because I don't really technically need to have it there anymore because I've been sewing these for so many years already. Um, if your ear slips a little bit, you can just readjust it if you need to. I'm not too particularly worried about it with this bear because I'm putting a bow on this bear once it's completed. So that will probably be hidden anyways. Um, go slow around the curves and make sure that you get as close to the edge of the head as you can when sewing on the ears if you decide to follow how I put my bears together. If you're following somebody else's tutorial, then you'll have to follow them, but I have a simpler way that I use to get my bears. Um, so there you have it. Hopefully I'll show you here in a second. I'm just trimming all those loose threads. They drive me nuts. Does it, do you understand what I mean? <laughs> there you go. So the ear will be centered with those seams. Um, again, do your best. If you're still new to this, just take your time and it'll work out. Thanks for following along. Be sure to like and subscribe and get on the free newsletter at sopreneur.com. If you are looking for a memory bear maker or keepsake maker, please visit memorybearsandkeepsakes.com. Thank you. Hi, before you go, please consider giving me a like and subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and let YouTube know you like my channel. Bye-bye.